Painting day. Yeah, day zoo. I've got three days to be precise, Jono. Three days to paint the exterior before the scaffold comes down. Can I do it? Yeah, of course. Challenge accepted. I'm Lucy. And I'm Jono. And this is Reno Goals. We are leaving the city behind and are cruising down the Great Ocean Road for our next big home renovation. This beach home is a very charming weatherboard shack. It was built in 1930 and is positioned in an incredible location in Lawn overlooking the ocean. It's been in Jono's family for over 50 years and it is a much loved family home. You have literally spent your entire life there. I sure have. It's a good spot to be. I wouldn't blame you. Yeah, I love it. But all of those years have meant it's somewhat weathered. It's definitely needing an upgrade. <laughs> Currently this home has three bedrooms with one and a half bathrooms. So for a growing family, it's safe to say it's getting a little crowded. It has two very modest sized decks. The upper deck has a great view of the ocean, but struggles to fit everyone when the whole family is visiting. And the lower deck is flanked by trees and is mainly only used to access the outdoor shower. So the number one reason for this renovation is that this family home doesn't actually fit the family anymore. <laughs> so we need to add more bedrooms, more bathrooms. And we need to upgrade all of the existing rooms mm -hmm. as well as extend that deck for a much more generous outdoor entertaining area. Big job. Yes, it is. <laughs> we better get started. We pumped it out. We, went, we blew up two sump pumps and then we ended up with a wet back. We were in, the, in there yesterday with the wet back sucking the oh, water out. Oh, really? <laughs> so just to get them, uh, clean them all oh, out. Oh, lucky we, we got some sunshine. In. So how long will it there? take to um, dry? What are your thoughts? Changed a bit? I'm thinking there's no going back now, is there? Okay, so from a planning perspective, my brother and I knew exactly what we wanted to do with this project, but we did want to stick within the sort of council guidelines so we didn't end up in any lengthy back and forth trying to get approvals. So things like the size of the extension and making sure the external cladding was in line with what was already there. So one of the challenges of building in lawn is a lot of the blocks are quite steep. Most of the house up the top is on semi-flat land but once we get downstairs, we step the house down and when we build that wing out, we're gonna end up with about a five meter drop from the floor level of that last bedroom, which means there's gonna be a lot of empty space underneath it. So what we're actually going to do is get a concrete slab in there, set it out as a single garage. Access won't be great at the start, but at least it's gonna be a usable storage space for future. <laughs> deck is going to be so big. Look how big it feels. It's incredible. Looks epic. It does look epic. We've got a bedroom. We've, we've got, got a bedroom. We've got more bedrooms. You can see the window frames ready to go. When 
When it comes to the exterior design of this home, we want to achieve a modern coastal look that is still harmonious with the existing facade. Lawn is a coastal town and it's predominantly a holiday destination. It very much grew in popularity around sort of 1920, 1930, and that is actually when a lot of housing began to happen. And that's actually when this home was built. So the majority of those homes were weatherboard shacks and a lot of those can still be seen in Lawn today. However, there has been a whole lot of building in Lawn and all along the Great Ocean Road. So there are some incredibly impressive contemporary new builds in Lawn as well. However, when it came to the building of this particular project, there was absolutely no mention about knocking down the old and starting from scratch. For one, we didn't have the budget, but two, we just love the home so much and there's just so much history there. So for us, it was more about building that new extension and making sure that the cladding and materials that we chose worked within that existing look and feel. So to create that modern coastal look, we're actually gonna be using two key materials, linear weatherboards by James Hardy and Hardy fine texture cladding. These are fiber cement, which means they're super durable and they can withstand a lot of harsh weather conditions. They're also fire resistant and lower maintenance than say your traditional cement render or even those older timber weatherboards. day today yeah bottom roof is going on yeah i have never seen a roof get put on a house before so i'm um, going to learn something today i've never <laughs> been here when it gets done either <laughs> are we using a good roof blanket yeah 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 and you can't yeah you can't get any better you can't get any better no. we've got the best best the best nothing but the best <laughs> you testing so this is tranquil retreat which is going to be the weatherboard and that is white on white for the trim there is a life I lead in this city to cup my tea I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am? When it came to creating a modern coastal color palette, for me, it was all about fresh whites and grays. So I had a good look through the Dulux color range and I do mean a good look. <laughs> I was obsessing over colors for quite some time, but I did end up choosing Tranquil Retreat. So this is going to be on all of the exterior cladding and I'm actually gonna be painting this in the Dulux Weather Shield. So I really wanted a durable exterior paint. I needed to make sure that it would withstand all of those harsh weather conditions Conditions. Now for the trim, I've actually chosen white on white. I'd already painted the faces. However, I've changed my mind. I saw it the day after I'd painted it and it was just a bit too stark when I had full sun on it. So I'm actually gonna change that to natural white. It's just a bit of a softer, slightly creamier white and just a slightly more subtle contrast with that tranquil retreat. Now, we're actually gonna be introducing Color Bond as well. I chose this in wind spray. We're gonna be using this for both the roof and also some of the cladding on the lower new extension. For the deck, we're going to be bringing in iron bark. I love the warmth of that, but also that's going to gray off and weather beautifully over time. To go alongside that natural white on the trims, I'm gonna be introducing a new material. So I've actually chosen this brushed brass. So this is from Iva, and this hardware is going to be on both the exterior and also the interior hardware as well. 
I love the way it sits next to that. It's very soft. So it's looking very coastal, very classic and calm at the moment, but I'm going to be bringing in some color. I really want to bring in green to pick up on the beautiful trees and the surrounding environment. So I'm actually designing a table right now with baseline and that's going to be using this beautiful green tone. And then I also want to bring in some more pale eucalypt as well. The other main component of the exterior is going to be the new outdoor kitchen. So I've been working with Weber to design up the perfect barbecue for our space. Super easy to use. They've just got different modules to choose from. So you can basically just pick and choose the size that you want. And you also get to choose your cabinetry finish as well. So I've actually chosen bespeckled gray and I'm also going to go with a black Weber barbecue as well. But to cut through all of that, I'm also gonna be choosing a pebble gray finish, which is a lighter speckled gray bench top. To make sure I've got some softer elements, I really wanted to create a comfortable zone. So I've chosen some outdoor couches. I've actually selected the Wilhelmina three-seater sofa from Globe West. They come in two different colors, but I actually chose the gray in the end because I really wanted to have a nice complimentary gray tone against the gray of the Tranquil Retreat. And I think that that's gonna sit beautifully in amongst the trees. This is our chimney. I love the brick and we're going to keep it, but we are going to paint over it. There were some cracks and imperfections. So what we've done is filled a few of them with mortar, but you can still see it. So instead of just using normal exterior paint, what we've actually chosen is this textured paint. You can choose a couple of different variations. I actually went for medium. So it has a lot more texture. It has a nice rendered finish, helps to hide all those imperfections. Before that goes on though, we do need to use a textured primer. This has also got texture as well. It helps to create a really nice sealed surface and basically something for that textured paint to adhere to. I've never used it before, so we'll give it a crack. How much do you like painting? I love it. Ask me that again in however in many months. Legs. Yeah. How'd your painting go? Good, all done. Sweet. Um, one coat, I'm definitely gonna do another coat of primer tomorrow, I reckon, just to give it a really heavy finish and coat it a bit, because it's still a bit patchy. A little what bit patchy. Reckon? But I think good. it looks good. Yeah. yeah, like painting with sand. It is a bit, isn't yeah. it? It's quite thick. Yeah, very thick. This is now like five kilos heavier. So we'll pack up, go home. You gonna help pack up, Dusty? No, I'm gonna eat rocks <laughs> and bits of timber. <laughs> And whatever else I can find on the ground. All right, let's pack up. Clean up, pack up. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah. Because it's going to rain tomorrow. So that's good timing.
like you're painting in slow mo. Well, I am. My best line yet. Yeah. Look at that. Painting day. Yeah, day zoo. I've got three days to be precise, Jono. Three days to paint the exterior before the scaffold comes down. Can I do it? Yeah, of course. Challenge accepted. So these look beautiful. The James Hardy weatherboards. These are actually good because like not much prep, like zero prep. We just need to make sure that they're clean. I'm gonna paint straight over the top of them, which is good. Well, they're already primed. Already primed, ready to go. And um, all of the nail holes are like hidden because they kind of layer over each other. So yeah, no mess, it's really good. This is looking good, tranquil retreat. Happy beautiful. with your color choice? Yeah, very classic, very coastal. Yeah. I'm feeling good about it. So we'll let's see when it's done. Paint all these and then I've got to paint and finish off all the window trims as well. There's a bit to do. Well, get cracking. Good day. Cracking yeah. day. You've already been going. I have. So what I've done, I've dug all this out. I've leveled it up because I got these guys from Bunnings. These were the um, planter boxes. So I got six of them in the end, which they're going to act as a really nice garden bed all along the front of this house. So I've leveled those up. And these are my pretty plants that I've got. I've got some tostrum. I've got some variegated lavender, some leucodendron, some protea, some a few more lavenders down there. And I liked it because it's like, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I liked the colors, the different shapes, and I wanted it to kind of grow up nice and big and bushy. So it frames this entrance to the house beautifully. How tall are they going to get? Well, I don't know. Hopefully quite big and bushy. I mean, the lavender should go really well. The potostrum should go well. And I spoke to the lady at Bunnings who was lovely. <laughs> um, and she's just like, these are super hardy, can't kill them. So I was like, tick. So potting mix over there, if you want to help me pot these and then um, I've already put them all out in a row so I know exactly where I want them to go. So it's nice and easy. Pot them and all we do is put them in there and I like that because then if one of them dies or something, it's just sort of easy to switch around or if you want to move it, if one of them gets too big, you want to move it to the garden, you can do that and put something new in. Yeah? All right, let's get potting. All right, okay.
so it's time to enjoy fresh craze outside on the table. What do you think? This drinks trolley ever since I saw it in the Globeware showroom. I absolutely love it. So I've got a little cocktail station here as well as some extra um, plates and things for entertaining. I love the green of this. It works really nicely with our outdoor table. So I've started dressing the table. I've got these beautiful blue and white striped napkins. These are salt and pepper. And I'm gonna do a little knotted napkin, but I like them knotted. It creates a nice relaxed look cute and then to finish it off I'm just gonna grab a little clipping from the tree out the front to pop it in and we're finished That was massive. How are you going? Are you okay? I'm fine. Are you still are you with right? me? I'm I pretty am. tired. How's your painting arm going? Oh my god, so much painting. But how good does it look? It looks bloody amazing. <laughs> oh my god. I especially like that just strip we added, very simple instant hedging from Bunnings. At the front, yeah. it looks good. I think it looks really good. Yeah. It was a really good cost-effective way to achieve that. So I was quite impressed with that. And they've grown up really well. They are getting quite bushy. I love that deck. The two new decks, I should say. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about the new deck? The outdoor kitchen. Oh my God. How pimping is it's it? It's so pimping. <laughs> it's actually, a bit, I thought it would like overkill to have a sink and stuff out there. But it actually gets used. It's actually oh, quite handy. I did not think it was overkill. I was almost no. trying to go bigger. I think Weber were like holding me back because <laughs> they're like, you don't have the space for it. Settle down. Yeah. Our old table was timber and it was buckling a lot. It wasn't doing too well with the heat. And so that engineered board is going to wear very well. And no also, maintenance. No maintenance. And also I really like the pale eucalypt green that I chose for that. I just think Good that- Good color choice. Yeah. So yeah. I want to keep a bit of that green coming through into other areas of the home as well. But yeah, that is very much a massive focal point. And I love the way we've got that umbrella celebrated, or two umbrellas, I should say, mm -hmm. celebrating that because it does get super hot, like it cops a fair bit of sun. I've got a massive like crush on that brown beige one with the little tassels from Basil Bangs. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it's a good one. It's the most perfect place to sit. Oh my God, those couches are so comfy. Yeah, they are. Oh they actually God. are. They're as comfy as an indoor <laughs> they couch. actually yeah, are. They're like legit. But I like the fact that we did that because I really wanted to create additional living space. It used to actually um, be a built-in a built bench seat. On, the, oh, on that deck. I was Way thinking, back in the day. I was thinking about that, but I was like, bench seat, really comfy couch from Globe West. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that, it was actually quite a really easy decision to make. 
And the downstairs deck we've actually made useful now. So yes. before it was grown up with a lot of trees overhanging it, which had made it rotten out mm. and the outdoor shower had probably contributed to that a bit. Mm. But that new outdoor shower, so good. Pretty pimping. Oh my god, so, so good. So good to have those robe hooks opposite it. Yeah. It's right near the entrance to the deck now instead yeah. of being on the opposite side, so it's much more useful. And I like the fact that it'll be, you know, for downstairs, it's like the messy entrance into the deck area. So if you've got kids running around, if people just been to the beach, it's like if you've got sandy feet, you go down there, whereas upstairs, a bit more sophisticated. Because we've extended the upstairs deck, it's enclosed. Yeah. So it's actually providing a lot of protection for that rumpus room. And obviously you look out onto the new wing. Yes, the new wing. I like saying the new wing. <laughs> it's a good wing. It is a good wing. Yeah. How good can I just say, James Hardy, leaving your weatherboards, much easier to paint than trying to restore old weatherboards. Wish we'd done James Hardy everywhere. We were going to replace all of the weatherboards, but we ran out of time. Yeah. So that's a job for another day. Yeah. CSR Bradford roof blanket went on. We've also got ceiling insulation. We've got all the wall insulation and we've got the sound screen products in the internal walls. Yeah. It's almost silent, but the heating and cooling is so much more efficient now. Yeah. And look, that's the stuff that you don't necessarily see at the end. It's all, it's hidden, all hidden, but it's probably the most important. And I'm so glad that we actually did that and did it well, because that was the biggest part of actually future proofing this home. So also on the exterior, you might see on the roof, the heat pump for the new hot water service. Yeah. Much more efficient. We don't have the luxury of gas in lawn and we didn't want to add bottles. We've no. always run an electric hot water service, but it was a huge tank and it was very inefficient. Yeah. So that new one with the solar panels on the roof is way more efficient and it doesn't look that bad on the roof either. Just size it per the household. So we've got too many bathrooms. So we went big. <laughs> we've got a lot of we've got a lot of bathrooms now, so we went big. We do. Yeah. This is now a five bedroom and five bathroom home. So you've got more episodes to watch in order to make sure you see and understand what's actually inside all of this new build. That's it. Alongside those decks, we mm. did actually engineer and pre-plan for the next upgrade. Mm, that's my pull that yeah. I didn't get. No, you didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. When I look out on that, I just do like an imaginary line and splashes of what could have been. <laughs> what may be in the future. But okay. anyway, we did, we, we engineered for it. We've got drawings drawn up. And while we were there with all the machinery, we dug some extra footings, put some concrete yeah. in. It's ready to go. We've got plans for it. I think that's important though, because you know, budget restraints and also you know what you can achieve in certain time frames as well we just couldn't make it happen so it's good to be able to think about your project in stages so that's definitely our next stage the other thing that we didn't really get to was also landscaping so i mean we didn't get to finish that if anything <laughs> i mean no, we, just, we, did. we cleaned it up we did a lot of clean up there was yep. a lot it was basically a bush block before we started so it was yep. a lot of clean up which is great for fire prevention next summer and yeah, the driveway, it, it works, Yeah. but that's an upgrade we'll do in the future. We've got a bit of mulch down. And uh, your garage, you haven't garage. even tackled your garage fit out. So well, yeah, another project, that's storage another project. space at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, I am gonna do a little garage makeover down there. That's gonna be a fun one. Fun times ahead, more planning, more projects. with a lazy Susan. This is the big question of the day. Hang on, wait! Okay. I need to compose myself! <laughs>
big fingerprints on the lens. <laughs> How'd they get there? I don't know. Do you uh, need to fix them? Maybe. What happens when you reno? Yeah, blow it off. Oh, that's much better. What have you got? Don't feel miserable. Why not? Oh, this is my special time. Yeah. <laughs> what have you got? Lamo. Mm, I deserve it. Are these the best Lamos on the surf coast? They're pretty good. Apollo Bay Breakery coming through with the goods. Yeah, do you want some? Yeah. Because it's not gonna last long. Yeah. You can have this. Oh, I'll have the rest. Wait. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tip, DIY tip. Right. Number 57. Always have good snacks. <laughs>